Hello everyone, I am Pradhnya. In this video, we are going to study chapter 1 that is computer system overview. In this chapter, we are going to study the fundamentals of computer. So, let's get started. Let's understand what is computer. Computer is an electronic machine and it runs on the electricity and it follows the principle of IPO that is input process and output. It takes the input processes it and displays the required output. Then next, let's understand what is hardware. Hardware are the physical components of the computer. Some of the hardware devices are monitor, mouse. We can see it, we can touch it and we can feel it. Now let's see what is software. As you know, computer is an electronic machine. It cannot run on its own. So we need some set of instructions to operate a computer. Some of the softwares are utility software and antivirus softwares. Now let's study the most important topic of the chapter that is components of the computer. You can see from the block diagram there are total five components of the computer. The first one is input device. We have output device. The next one important component is CPU. And for storage, we need memory. So we have primary memory and the secondary memory. So let's study the functionality of each component. First one is the input device. As the computer works on the principle of IPO, we need to give the input to the computer. So for taking input, input devices are used. Some of the commonly used input devices are keyboard, mouse, etc. After processing, we need to display the result on the monitor or printer. For that, we use the output devices. So, it is used to display the result. The important component of the computer is CPU. It is also called as the brain of the computer. It is responsible for processing the data and the instructions. It is further divided into three components. That first one is arithmetic and logic unit that is ALU. It is responsible for performing all the arithmetic and logical operations. Arithmetic operations consist of plus minus multiplication and division and logical operations are consist of less than greater than and less than equals to and so on the next part of the cpu is control unit that is cu it is responsible for controlling and supervising the processing the next part of the cpu are the registers these are small data holding space within the cpu which is used to hold the processing information temporarily now we need storage for that we have primary memory it is also called as main memory it is used to hold the data and instructions temporarily as main memory holds the data temporarily we need permanent storage for that we have the secondary memory there are different types of secondary memory that we are going to study in detail before studying types of memory in detail let's try to understand what is memory Memory is just like a cupboard, the way cupboard has partition, the memory is also partitioned, it is called as memory cells and in that cell we store the information in the form of bits, bits means binary digit, bit is an elementary unit of memory. There are two bits 0 and 1, you can see here there are lot of memory measurements, 8 bits equals to 1 byte and there are other units of measurements also KB, MB, GB and there are so on. Every higher unit is equals to 1024 of its lower unit that is 2 raised to power 10, if you multiply 2 raised to power 10 into the previous previous unit you get the next unit of measurements now let's study the types of memory first we will study the primary memory primary memory is divided into two parts the first one is random access memory that is ram and the second one is rom that is read only memory ram is further divided into dram that is dynamic ram and the static ram and rom has the different variation prom eprom eeprom flash eeprom and mask prom so let's study the types of memory in detail the first is random access memory as you know memory is divided into partitions and in that partitions we will store our data so we can access any location randomly that's why it is known as random access memory it is used for manipulating data during processing but it is volatile the meaning of volatile is the content are erased when the power goes off means it is a temporary storage it is further divided into two types dynamic ram and the static Gram. Dynamic RAM is made of transistors and capacitors and the access time below 20 to 70 nanosecond. 
what is the access time it is the time taken to access the elements of the memory from that particular location the second type of ram is static ram it is made up of flip flops and the access time is 10 nanosecond that is lower than the dynamic ram so the static ram is the faster than the dynamic ram now let's study the rom the another type of primary memory in detail what is rom the full form of rom is read only memory means we can do the only read operation we cannot write the data into the rom it is non volatile the contents are permanently stored even though the power goes off but it is slower than the ram as you know it is read only memory we cannot write data into it but at the time of manufacturing we need to write certain data so there are some variations to the rom so that we can write data which we can read further so the first variation is prom that is programmable rom prom is a user programmable memory and we can burn the information using special arrangement that is called as rom burner there is one more variation of the prom that is e prom means erasable prom here we can erase the data using uv radiations when we erase the data using uv radiations the, the data will get erased completely so we have one variation for the eprom that is eeprom electrically erasable programmable rom here the selected bytes can be erased electrically the next one is the flash eeprom means some variations again in the eeprom what it does it is similar to eeprom but it is fast comparatively because it erases the full data not selectively The last variation of ROM is the mask ROM. In the mask ROM, the information is written by the IC manufacturer, not by the user. These all other variations were user programmable memory. There is a one more type of memory known as cache memory. It is the high speed memory placed between the CPU and the primary memory, and it stores the most recently accessed data. As you know, the speed of the CPU is very high. and if primary memory cannot give the instructions to the cpu at that speed so some instructions we can store in the cache memory to match with the speed of the cpu now let's discuss some of the secondary storage devices it is used to store large amount of data and that to permanently as you know the main memory stores the data temporarily so the first secondary device we are going to study is the hard disk hard disk consists of circular plates as you can see in the picture it is coated with the magnetic material and it is recorded by the read write head the storage capacity of the secondary storage device can vary from gb to tb so it is the most widely used secondary storage device the next storage device device is the cd cd is an optical media it is cheap and the storage capacity can be up to 700 mb there are different types of cd the first one is cd rom compact disk read only memory read only memory means we can read the data but we cannot write the data into the cd there is a one more variation of cd that is compact disk recordable cd r here we can write the data only once but we cannot erase it generally this type of cd was used for software there is one more variation that is cd rw means rewritable the cd is erasable and data can be written multiple times the third type of storage device is dvd it is also an optical media but it is faster than the cd and the storage capacity it is up to 17 gb the types of the dvds are same like cd cd rom cd r and cd rw one more storage device is called as flash memory it is small portable storage device and it is very cheap and the storage capacity can be from 256 mb to 128 gb and it can go beyond also there is a one more type of storage device just like cd and dvd that is called as blu ray disc it is also an optical storage media it uses a blue violet razor to read and write the data from this disc it stores the hd videos and data and the storage capacity is more up to 128 gb and it can go beyond also the next topic we have to go through is system bus you know bus in real life carries people from one place to another place 
So same in computer also bus carries the data and signals. It is an electronic pathway composed of cables that connects the major components of the computer. You can see here these are the cables. So there are different types of bus. The first one is data bus. It carries the data. The next one is control bus. The control bus controls the instructions carrying part of the bus. Address bus carries the address and the IO bus which connects the input, output and other external devices to the computer. We saw the picture of motherboard in the previous slides where all the components of the computers get attached through these cables that is through this bus. We studied the components of the computer system. Now it's turn to study the components of the mobile system, which is the favorite of everyone. The first component of the mobile system organization is mobile processor that is mobile CPU. It is also a brain of mobile. It receives the commands. It does the calculation, plays audio video. It stores the information and sends signals throughout the device. The CPU of the mobile system divided into two parts. The first one is communication process unit. It is responsible for making phones call. The second part of the CPU is application process unit that is APU. It is responsible for governing and controlling all types of operation by running mobile apps. The second component of the mobile system is display system. As you know when we use mobile the display is the important part of the mobile. The responsibility of display system is it provides the display facility facilities, it provides the touch sensitive interface and it provides the touch sensitive keyboards also. The third component is the camera that is the most fascinating part of the mobile. It has image processing packages and it has integrated image signal processors also. So processor does capturing of the image, it provides the high resolution support, even image stabilization and other enhancements also. Now let's discuss about the memory of the mobile. Here also we have two types of memory. One is RAM and one is ROM which works similar to computer. It is the work memory and the second type of memory is ROM. It is a part of internal storage not accessible to the user. It stores the operating system of the mobile and some pre-installed app which cannot be deleted by the users. Then what about the storage? We have external storage like SD card where we can store our data. There is a one more component that is battery also known as power management system. It provides power to the mobile system which comes with a battery charger and a battery unit. Next try to understand what is software as you know software is a set of instructions which are used for the smooth functioning of the computer. The types of softwares are system software and the application software. So first try to understand what are system software. The system software controls the internal operations of the computers. There are two types of system software. The first one is operating system and the second one is the language processor. Operating system and the as an interface between a user and a hardware. This is the most important software of the computer system. There are different types of operating system, single user, multi user, multi program, multi processing operating system. The next one is language processor. As you know, computer understands only binary language. We need to convert the other high level languages or assembly language into the binary language. Language processor does the task of converting the program from the high level language to the machine code. So there are three types of language processors, assembler, interpreter and compiler. Let's study in detail. What is assembler? Assembler converts the assembly language program into the machine program. The second type of language processor is known as interpreter. Interpreter converts the program from high level language to the machine level language but line by line. And the third type of language processor is compiler. It is like interpreter. It converts the high level program to the machine level language but whole program at a time. The second type of software we have is application software. Application softwares are the set of programs which are used for carrying out some specific applications. 
Application softwares are categorized into four types. The first one is packages, then we have utility software, the third one is customized software and the next one is developer's tools. So let's understand what is package. So packages are general application software which make computer useful for people. There are different categories of packages. The first one is word processing software like MS Word. Then we have spreadsheet that is MX Excel, database management system with then desktop publishing software and graphics multimedia and presentation software. The second category of application softwares are utilities. These performs the housekeeping functions for the computer. There are lot of utility software. The first one is text editor. It is used for creating and editing text file. We can take the backup of the disk using backup utility. We can compress the file so that it can take the less storage area. For that we can use the compression utility. We can use this defragmenter to rearrange the file so that we can get the free space on the computer and there is one more utility that is antivirus software which can scan your disk for virus and remove them. The next category of application softwares are customized software which are tailor made to perform some specific task according to the user's requirements. So there are different types of customized software. We can take example of hotel management system, then payroll management system and the last one is developer tool. Developer tool is used to create, test and debug your software. So this was all about the different types of softwares. Along with the software we have some libraries also you know in real life also what is the meaning of library in the library we have set of books from that we can take it and use it so in computer also we have pre-written codes functions and classes which are stored in the libraries and we can use them for the development of our new code some of the libraries are numpy sky fi and panda in python that we are going to study in the further chapters so in this video i have covered the chapter one if you have any doubt suggestions or queries feel free to type in the comments below in the next video we are going to study the chapter two so keep studying see you in the next video video.